So now that we've chosen the image we're going to work on, let's go back to um, getting our top bar there. And I'm going to go into the develop module now. And by clicking on develop, we now go into what looks like the loop view. And in fact, it works an awful lot like the loop view. As you can see, it's just taking a moment to load. It's once again creating a full size detailed preview of this image. And if we click once, we can zoom in and we can click and drag around. And if we click once again, we can zoom out. Um, now, I'm just going to quickly show you the navigator here. We've got at the top of the navigator on the left here, uh, fit, fill, one to one and three to one. Uh, now that zoom in that I showed you, if I click once and zoom in, that's going to go to one to one, unless you've chosen three to one here, in which case when you zoom in, it's going to go to three to one. Let me just give you a bit more room so you can see what's going on. That is probably useful for things like dust removal. You can see there's little bits of dust here and there. Um, other than that, I really think the one-to-one -one view is a lot more useful. So um, this is just a useful way of deciding what you're going to see. Personally, I keep it to the fit view and one-to-one -one for zooming in. So I don't actually use that navigator at all. And in fact, I tend to keep that left-hand bar closed. I tend to keep the right-hand bar open, which is where all the editing stuff is. So I'll come to that in just a moment. But in this case, let's do what we always do with these photos and decide what it is we're here to do. This is the photo as it absolutely came out of the camera. Just looking down, um, let's just go back to... Actually, is, it, is this how it came out of the camera? I think it's probably more likely... Yeah, I think this is, I think this has just got its auto adjustment. So, well, let's, let's, let's do that. We've got the... Um, uh, actually, I can show you what, what came out of the camera. Because on the left-hand side here, we have a snapshot section. And this is a useful way of saying, OK, I like how it looks right now. So if I go to the Import view, I've just clicked on that Import under Snapshots. Whenever you import a file into Lightroom, it automatically makes a snapshot at that point. So it remembers exactly how it looked as it came out the camera. So that's going back to that snapshot import. And that's, that's how it's come out of the camera. Now, as with Bridge, we've got, I'm just going to get rid of that, bottom film strip and that top give us a bit more room as with bridge we've got an auto button that will do automatic tone adjustments for us so if i click that we can see what it's done first thing it's done is it's pushed the brightness right up i don't particularly like that so i'm going to just uh, go into my history which i'm on the left hand bar here we've got a history um, and i'm going to undo by going back to snapshot import there um, so we've got an auto button um much like Bridge, in some cases it's going to work great. In some cases it's not going to do a fantastic job. Um, once again, let's go back to what we're trying to achieve here. I'm going to make a promo image. And my first rule of um, promo, image, promo images is that they've got to look clean and tidy. And I think that that's, that's going to mean reducing and simplifying this image quite considerably. So the first thing I think that needs to go here is the um, white space around the edge. I mean, so we've got a bit of space up here bit of space down here that's all got to go and we're going to do that clearly with cropping um, now the next thing that ap ap appeals to me about this image is that we've got some bands of color here and i really want to bring those bands of color up because that's really going to be brand my branding um, a big part of my branding at least branding is all about um, the visuals of branding at least are all about um, uh, recognition and recognition can come from a bunch of different things typefaces are very good Colors are very good. Uh, locations can be useful in some cases. Um, so you may have noticed I tend to put the, the photo walkthrough text sort of um, a little way down from the top on the left hand of whatever, on the left hand side of whatever I put it on. So uh, there is a sort of a consistency of location for where the logo goes. Um, but that's, that's basically uh, my branding. That color banding there is going to be a big part of how this brand works. So uh, I'm going to bring those colors up. I'm going to try and make sure that they're different from each other because at the moment they're kind of a similar color. I mean, this is kind of lilac -y, and this is kind of reddy, sort of uh, magenta -y. Um But if I can just separate those colors a little bit more, that'll be great. The white balance on this actually looks pretty good at the moment. Um, if this works out anything like the previous version of this, I think we'll find that actually the white balance does need a little tweaking. But um, it looks reasonably good here. The other thing that I'm going to want to do is I'm seeing a little bit of breaking here in this line i might want to just see if i can correct that a little bit and also zooming in i'm seeing quite a lot of dust i mean there's a big white blob there for example there's a kind of a, a blob there 
Um, that, I think, is, is kind of a reflection. I might leave that one in. Maybe, maybe not. Not decided. Um, a little bit of brightness there that doesn't need to be there. A couple of dust spots. It's possible to zoom in and, and find things that, that bother you when you're zoomed in that you really won't see in the final image. So, so this, is, this is an experience thing. You need to decide what's important and what isn't and where to spend your time. But let's start. I think um, I, I take the same approach in Lightroom as I do in uh, uh, Photoshop that really you want to be working on your bitmap edits uh, uh, first if you can. So that means things like cropping and it also means things like uh, spot removal. So we've got this spot removal tool down here which is the remove spot tool you can get to by pressing N on the keyboard and uh, just get rid of that film strip. These, these things pop up. If you just mouse over them they pop up temporarily mouse away and they go away again. So let's let's go in and use that spot removal tool. I'm just going to remove that white spot there. So with the N key pressed, um, you can see now we're in the spot removal tool, and we've got two options. We've got clone and heal, which those of you that uh, that know Photoshop well will recognise. Those are two of the regular ways of removing spots in Photoshop as well. Now, unlike Photoshop, this is not a, a bitmap operation. It's actually stored. All of these edits are stored in an XML file. So what we're doing is we're saying, okay, I'm going to do a spot removal with a spot size of, of whatever we choose. So you can see we've got a, a slider here, and you can use your mouse wheel to increase and reduce the size of that. And just like in Photoshop, you want to get that, the size of that spot to about the size of whatever the edit is. So I'm going to make it down to about there. And uh, in most cases, heal is what you want. So I'm going to just click once on that spot of dust there. And you can see right away what Lightroom has done is it's chosen another spot somewhere in the image that looks kind of similar, and it's painted over the top of where we clicked with what it's chosen. Now, um, the big difference between cloning and healing is that cloning would just take the same bitmap data, literally brightness and color values, and completely replace the one with the other. What the heal does is a little bit cleverer. It's the same sort of thing, but instead of keeping the same color information, it'll take the it'll take the luminosity information from where it selects, and it will um, try and blend the color in with whatever's around it. So the heal tends to do a, a better job. There are occasions where cloning is better, but usually healing is the way to go. So in this case, heal's done a great job. Let's just turn that off, and you can see that that spot is now completely gone. Um, and as I say, this is not stored as bitmap data. This is stored as um, information in an XML file, which is uh, an XML file is just a plain text file. It's like a series of instructions to the program. Um, so we've got an instruction there that said, I want um, a heel spot of this size at this location using this source point. And that, that's um, applied like, like maths, really, rather than like a, a copy of any bitmap data. So that's all done on the fly. Um, and if we ever wanted to, uh, to to back it out, it's it's there in the history. We can back that out. Uh, now, of course, I've um, moved away from where... Oh, there's the spot. That's the spot. So if I want to add that back out, I can do that just easily. And all we're doing is stepping through a series of instructions rather than stepping through a series of bitmap save copies. Um, and that's really important because what that means that they can do with these uh, history states is they can actually keep these history states from session to session. If I close Lightroom down and reopen it back up, not only will it come back to the same place where I was working last, but it'll remember all these history steps. So all the images in your library, you know, if you did, if you did uh, uh, edits like a year ago, not that Lightroom was out a year ago, but in a year's time, if you come back to images that you, that you edit today, you'll still be able to see the history steps for all the, all the edits you did. And that's really powerful. So that's our spot removal for that little dust spot. Let's see if I can do a little bit of spot removal for some other places. Here, for example, we've got these little breaks in the line here, which I think just slightly distract from the rest of the image. So I'm going to go back into my spot removal tool, and once again, just pressing N on the keyboard. And I'm going to click on that little break. Now, Lightroom's not done a great job of choosing a place that's a, that's a similar match here. So if I click and drag on the point that it's chosen, I can drag and see the edit as it happens here in this window. Now, the only way that this works is because um, this line is close enough that the eye is going to make it a continuous line. If I was to choose somewhere that's further up here, 
you can see that that edit is not going to look so great. If I just go out of there, you can see it's not quite in line because obviously I've chosen a point that's, that's, that's less the right angle. So I want to choose a point that's quite nearby that's going to be close enough that when I click away, I might just move that down a little bit. And now when I click away, we've got a nice continuous line there. Um, tricky to do with, with curved lines like this, but you can, in a lot of cases, get something that looks pretty darn good. So about there, and then I want another one there. Oops, and I, did you see I clicked on the edge of the line there, the edge of the circle, and you can resize them with your mouse. So I want to click there. About there, and then another patch there, and let's make that about there. Okay, and if I click away now, that's all my spot edits done. And if you want to just go back and see how it looked before I did those edits, you can see here in the history state, we've got all these dust spot corrections here in the background. If I go back to the snapshot import, that's how it looked before, and that's how it looks after I've corrected it. So there's a whole bunch of um, spots that I could be working on here. Um, I'm not going to go through all of these because obviously you don't need to see all of that. All you need to see is, is the technique and the principle. So um, I could just go around for ages cleaning up little dust spots. There's one there that definitely needs to go. I mean, there's a little chink in the, in the front plastic there that could possibly be tidied up. This is one of those jobs that you can make it like, take as little or as much time as you like. What this is really for, though, um, is for cleaning up um, sensor dust. And for that, it is really great. So, um, key thing here, these spot edits, because they're stored as instructions rather than as bitmaps, you can then copy these edits to the other photos in your in in uh, in your set so uh, i'm not going to go deeply into that now but if you've got a spot of dust on your sensor then it's going to appear in the same place in every photo you take and the key then is that you can if you've got multiple shots like this copy information from one image so we've got the copy settings dialog here if i say check none um, i can copy spot removal information from one image and press copy and go to another image and give it a moment just to load and when it's finished loading the paste button is available there and I can paste those settings from one to the other so if I close that down now and turn on the spot removal you can see all those little spots that I cloned on the other image those spots are now cloned here as well and it's it's using source data from this image it's not using source data from from the other image I copied it from it's it's just if I click on that you can see that spot point there has come from there. That spot that spot point there has come from come from there. So it's it's copying the locations rather than the actual bitmap data, and that's really important for those spot removal situations like sensor dust. Okay, so let's say that we've done enough spot removal here. Um, I would probably spend longer on this normally, but uh, in this case, I'm going to stop there just to keep the flow of the show going. Um, and I think probably. I'm not actually going to crop right now um, because another step in this process is going to be to do lots of different crops for different uses. And that's really because this is going to be a branding image rather than a photograph that I want to hang on the wall. So I'm not going to crop now. Normally I would have cropped already. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to um, work a little on the contrast and the color. I want to boost that color and I want to increase the contrast. Now, uh, the first thing I want to do to increase the contrast in this case is probably just bring the black point up. And as you can see on the histogram here, we've got sections of histogram. If you, you, can, you might be able to see, I don't know whether you'll see through the compression, the sections of the histogram that I'm mousing over are sort of lighting up a little bit. So if I drag down to, let's, let's drag to that main big section there, you can see that lighting up. If I click and drag on the histogram, what that's actually doing is it's dragging the, hist the exposure slider. And you can see which slider it's going to drag, because when you mouse over it, it says just under the histogram down here, Exposure, Fill Light, Blacks, and at the top end we've got Highlight Recovery. So what I want to do is I want to just drag the black point up and down, and what I am doing is I'm clipping some of my blacks here. 
So some of the, some things that weren't quite entirely black are going entirely black. And if I mouse over that little arrow there, you can see which points are going completely black. If I click on that, that'll leave that turned on. And you can see which areas I'm letting go to black. And that's fine. That That happens to be, as far as I'm concerned, useful because I don't want unnecessary distracting bits to this image. I've probably overcooked it just a little bit, but but there we go. That's that's the kind of effect I'm after. I want the lines to become really important about this image, not the uh, you know, this is not designed to be the world's most detailed image. This is designed to be uh, uh, an image that, that has a recognition factor to it, that has um, some strong branding for colours and, so, and some strong branding for shape and line. And it's nice if it's still recognisable as, as a lens, but, but actually that's probably slightly less important than, than the recognition factor for a brand logo. So I've got the backs dragged up. Um, you can see we've got some clipped blacks there. I'm also just going to introduce just a touch more brightness, just to just to counteract the that um, uh, the fact that we've clipped some of the blacks there. And what I'm doing actually with the histogram is I'm pushing the ends of the histogram away from each other, um, and hopefully we've still got a nice smooth um, tone curve in between. You can see we we're getting we've got a bit at the black black end that's got clipped, but it is still a lot of data in between. So that's looking pretty good. I'm going to just push the contrast up a little bit more as well. And that's looking pretty good. Now, the bit that's not looking so great here is the bit that I said I wanted to crop, crop out. This this lighter area in the background, that's going to go anyway. So I'm not worried too much about that. Um, but it, it is looking... This area of the image here, in, in comparison to this area here, oops, in comparison to this lighter area, is not looking so good. So if I just go into the crop tool, which you can get to by pressing R... Um, I'm just going to just going to crop in a little, just so that you can get the, the feeling of how this image is going to look. So, I mean, you'll have seen the promo image already, so you know roughly how it's going to look. But there we go. That's that's a lot more. I think uh, has a lot more impact as an image than uh, with that lighter bit on. So if I just go back to the history, let's bring that out, let's, so you can see the image. Back to there. And back to there, I think that makes quite a big difference to the to the impact of the image. It looks like an image that was meant to be just this bit when you've cropped it that way, and when you take it there, it looks a bit like it's unfinished. Okay, so we've been working on this image, and the purpose of what we've been doing up to now is to get the image ready for um, its final edit in Photoshop, and um, that's going to mean uh, taking it out of Lightroom and converting it to a PSD file, which is very easily done. Uh, let's go back to um, the image that I actually wanted to be working on, which is this one. Uh, apply those little edits that are done. Uh, about there. How's that looking? Maybe a little bit down on the blacks. Okay, so this is the editor. This is the image I want to be working on in, in Photoshop. And I'm going to right click here in the uh, film strip. And I, I think this window is going to be going off the bottom of your screen. But you can see the bit that I want to, um, sorry, this menu is going off the bottom of your screen. But you can see what I want to get at, which is edit in Photoshop CS3. So if I click that, it's going to bring up this edit window. Now, because this at the moment is a DNG file, it's a raw file, a digital negative. It's only giving us one option. And it's going to say edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. So what it's going to do, because... Uh, Photoshop can't just open a DNG and work on it. It's going to convert this to um, a file that Photoshop can work on. And, and what file format it converts it to is configurable. In my case, I like PSDs, so it's going to make a PSD file. And it's also, when it's done, when I finish working on it, it's going to stack the PSD file I create with the original. That's what this tick box is for. So if I click Edit now... Photo Walkthrough is a free online video show about photography and digital photo editing using Photoshop and Lightroom. Join the Photo Walkthrough community, find all the old shows, and subscribe to the new ones for free at photowalkthrough.com.